We have the latest on what's happening in Tobago, from the appointment of a new committee to the arrival of the Cabo Star. You can expect to hear it all in this week's episode. Tobago has so many wonderful places to dine, and we'll take you to two, the Sicilian Ristorante and Rev's Steakhouse and Bar. Stay with us. I'm Davia Chambers, and this is Let's Talk Tobago. The Cabo Star arrives in Tobago. The government honors Calypso Rose, and later, we take you to Music Camp. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. Our adventures start here at the Sicilian Restaurante, an Italian-themed restaurant located at Chilvan Plaza. It's fairly new to the market as it was established just one and a half years ago. Now, it's finally here. The Cabo Star arrived in Tobago, bringing relief to the truckers and the business community. Here are the details in this report. The Cabo Star is here. The cargo vessel which will be servicing the inter-island route for at least the next 12 months. The vessel can hold up to 130 cargo trucks. The trip should take five hours to and from Trinidad and Tobago. And following its arrival, Chief Secretary Calvin Charles, Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Councillor Nadine Stewart Phillips, Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy, and other dignitaries toured the Cabo Star. In terms of the quality of the appointment of the vessel, particularly as one as that relates to the cabins and so on as you saw for yourself um, it is a facility that is good as any and better than many certainly by comparison we had nothing like this on the galicia the vessel boasts 12 cabins which can hold four to six people each it also has a lounge where passengers can sit in comfort as well as a dining area. From all appearances, the capacity um, is more than the Galicia. That's number one. More importantly, what this means, um, given how we, we, we treat with cargo between China and Tobago at this time, is that you're going to have daily trips. Yeah? In most of the Caribbean countries, you don't have a situation where a cargo boat arrives at port every day. I um, do not see, at least in the short term, um, that we would be able to utilize this vessel to the maximum. The Cabo Star has four decks with an area for trucks, cargo and light vehicles. We have capacity that we now can at least restock our warehouses. Uh, we do not have to have the situation that we would have had in recent months. Uh, that we had to leave chocks behind. Uh, this vessel, from what we are seeing, can take all the chocks that we and, and cargo that we can pull on a daily basis. The cargo store will fill the gap created by the recent departure of the Superfast Galicia. The maintenance and staffing will be provided by the vessel's owners. The Chief Secretary is calling on Trinbagonians to treasure and preserve the cargo store. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Ambience, entertainment and authentic Italian dishes are some of the things customers can expect when they dine here at Sicilian. A review from Women's Wellbeing magazine says that the food at the Sicilian is utterly scrumptious and, listen to this, worth every calorie. Now this. The Secretary of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development appointed a new REACH committee to help communities to promote self-employment. We have all the details in this next report. Small startup businesses are set to get a boost from the Realization of Economic Achievement REACH program. Six persons have been appointed to serve on the REACH committee. The REACH unit focuses on community empowerment and poverty education among the poor and vulnerable in our communities. The committee, in an effort to reduce unemployment and underemployment, will help communities promote self-employment, entrepreneurship and self-sufficiency. The intention is that these communities will 
promote self-employment, entrepreneurship, and self-sufficiency. The, the other area is that it is going to equip persons, um, the more vulnerable and disadvantaged ones with mar marketable skills. And of course, it will contribute to the reduction of unemployment and underemployment in our communities. And of course, we expect that persons will move along to establish uh, micro-businesses. The initiative targets people 18 years and over who are unemployed and who submit a proposal that the committee determines is viable for business. Recipients will receive seed capital of $7,500. The expectation is that this committee, with the skills they bring, will ensure that we, we assess properly those submissions such that we can make those awards to persons. And, and may I share that the grants that will be given um, will be of the order of $7,500. Um, it is like seed capital that they will use towards commencing a small business. And so that's, that's a background in terms of what the committee will seek to do. The responsibilities of the REACH committee includes assessing the proposal of suitable applicants and ensuring funds are utilized for the purpose given. The members of the committee are Caressa Wilson, Chairman, Mrs. Lois Martin, Chan Secretary, Mr. Jarrah Martin, Ms. Mary Douglas, Mrs. Leslie Anthony Douglas, and Mr. Nigel Phillip. I have full confidence in this team, and I know that we will empower and will also transform the lives of the persons in the community. I take this opportunity also to thank you. The members of the committee will serve for two years. I'm Joanna Barrows for Let's Talk Tobago. Apart from authentic Italian food, customers can expect to find sushi on the menu. It's prepared by a sushi chef boasting more than a decade experience. So the Tobago Heritage Festival is the largest cultural event on the island. This year, the Heritage Calypso Monarch took a different turn as performers had the opportunity to grace the stage twice. Have a look at this report. Men and women of every age came from near and far, building with wood and tapia. In no time a house finished, a whole family used to live in it. That was true, lend hand with assistance from everyone. That's the Heritage Calypso Monarch of 2017, Delani Beans, performing her rendition in the contemporary Calypso category, Let We Use We Hand. Delani won $35,000. In the Vintage Calypso category, Delani Beans wowed the audience with a performance of Winston Shadow Bailey's song, Bass Man. I don't know how this thing gets inside me, but every morning, it's driving me crazy, 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 like it's taking me head for a pannier, morning and evening, like this fella born. And if I don't want to see Tim Tom when he start to do his thing, I don't want to, but I have to say Tim Tom. Taking the second position and $20,000 was Hanson Wright or Tobago Prince. His contemporary Calypso song was entitled Since Nicklan Bon. And here's a snippet of his vintage Calypso performance. A man named Sweet in Nicholson He used to live in Charlottesville who had the foresight and will he and his brother cassie decided to build a vessel to transport cargo between trinidad and tobago and leslie and ellis managed to capture the third spot look at the economy i saving for a rainy day and stretch me money i pinch in on me That's why I'm going back to my long time days. Mama tell me, since a baby, don't pass people just so when you're in Tobago. to play proudy, tell them howdy. I say, what's the reason, mommy? It's then she tell me, she tell me, all I we is one family. Seven contestants participated in this year's competition. 
I am Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, the Trinidad and Tobago government honors Calypso Rose. Stay with us, Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Here at the Sicilian Ristorante, customers dine with the sweet sounds of Italian music in the background, giving them the idea that they are really in Italy. Now, speaking of music and entertainment, the government of Trinidad and Tobago honors the Queen of Calypso and French Grammy Award winner Calypso Rose. They named an airplane after her. Let's get some details in our next story. It was a fitting tribute for the Calypso Queen of the World. A Boeing 737 aircraft named after the maestro, Dr. Linda MacArthur Sandy Lewis, affectionately known as Calypso Rose. The decision to name the aircraft after the Bethel Tobago born Calypsonian was taken by Cabinet of Central Government in honor of her contributions to the Calypso art form since 1955 to the present. Relax and enjoy your flight with us today on CR77, the Calypso was Calypso Queen of the World. During the commissioning, guests including three government ministers, Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Mrs. Maslin Melville Jack, and Caribbean Airlines officials were invited on board to view Rose's most recent video, Far From Home which will be part of Caribbean Airlines' in-flight playlist, along with her documentary feature, The Lioness of the Jungle. Calypso Rose was unable to attend the event due to international commitments, but viewed via the internet. Speaking to the audience from France, an energetic but emotional Rose expressed her appreciation to the government for bestowing on her such an honor. Now, Calypso will be flown all over the world, CR 77. So one more time, I would like to thank you. In the name of God, I would like to thank you all. Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Marcin Melville Jack, who represented the Tobago House of Assembly at the event, described Calypso Rose as a trailblazer who paved the way for women to participate in this once male-dominant cultural art form. Naming the 737 after her is like just breaking the ceiling for all of Tobago and all of the women in Tobago. We want to say how grateful we are to the government of Trinidad and Tobago for bestowing this tremendous honor upon our own Calypso Rose. Minister of Tourism Shamfa Kodjo, who is also from the same street in Bethel, where Calypso Rose once lived, said her ministry will capitalize on the Calypsonians' international acclaim. The Ministry of Tourism, we are now um, in discussions with her management team to get on board uh, for some overseas tourism campaigns in France. Um, for the new fiscal year, so we are hoping that that comes to fruition and that we can really uh, maximize all that we can from this opportunity. Rose was the first soccer artist to receive the French Victories de la Musique Award in Paris for her album Far From Home. From the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, I am Beverly Edwards for Let's Talk Tobago. We're on to our second stop, Rev's Steakhouse and Bar, located in Chirvan Road, Buku. Now it's in close proximity to the Le Grand Colon Resort and the Mount Irvin Beach facility. Feed the world and make it a much better place. World Food Day is celebrated in October, which means that it's right around the corner. This year, a few changes will be made to the event. We have more in this next report. World Food Day is coming up. It will be celebrated on October 16th around the world. But this year, there are changes coming to the usual two-day event in Tobago, which treats with the issue of food security. 
With the whole drive of food production on the island, we need to even change up the activities in which we normally uh, carry out for World Food Day. Instead of a food fair at the parade grounds of the Dwight York Stadium, celebrations will span the entire month of October. These efforts will be made to educate our stakeholders, farmers, students, the general public on agriculture. We will conduct workshops, seminars, and open days at the different agriculture stations that the division has responsible for, responsibilities for throughout the entire month of October with a gear to boost the awareness of farming more instead of just an activity. The Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries will also host a farmer's market at various locations throughout the island. Where the farmers will still be able to sell their produce on the different days. So these are the changes that we should be looking forward to for the World Food Day. World Food Day events promote worldwide awareness and action for those who don't have enough food. It's also aimed at ensuring food security and nutritious diets across the globe. World Food Day is a chance for Tobago to show its commitment to sustainable development goal number two, to achieve zero hunger by 2030. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Rev Steakhouse and Bar is owned by young entrepreneur Stefan Charlotte. The establishment was set up in November 2015. Now the restaurant has a car theme as it's decorated with cars and almost everything related to cars. So Charlotteville was the place to be for many locals and visitors to the island as the Tobago Heritage Festival entered its natural treasures day. Here's what you missed. If you wanted to dance the coco. Eat freshly baked bread from a dirt oven. Squeeze the batty mill for cane juice. Hear tambo bamboo. Or learn about the washing of the dead bed, a tradition where women in the village would wash the clothes of the deceased at a riverside to say goodbye. Then Charlotteville Natural Treasures was the event to attend. Every year, as part of the Tobago Heritage Festival, the community of Charlotteville celebrates its traditions and rituals. When you walk up big mango below, she starts with mango tree. She wants the best to see. Now look what happened. Later on in the evening, the village presented its stage production themed Tankala, Enough is Enough, a presentation based on crime and violence. The Tobago Heritage Festival ends on August 1st. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, we take you to music camp. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back.
Just last week, Rev's Steakhouse and Bar received their first Certificate of Excellence from TripAdvisor. Stefan's inspiration for Rev's was a dream he had at the age of 15 to create a restaurant with a theme that's unique to the island with ambience that suits all age groups. It's the season for summer camps and this one is a little different from the ordinary as it encourages children to learn or develop their musical skills. Karen Freitas has more in this report. Listen to this. Where words fail, music speaks. That certainly was the case at the Vacation Experience. It's an annual pan and music camp hosted by the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. And over 200 children took part. The camp is engaging and educating Tobago's youngsters on the island's culture in the arts and the performing arts. Well, the camp was born out of a need to engage a child while she's a, or he's a play. Right? It was meant to really create a learning environment during the vacation so that no time is lost learning something. This time it's culture, the arts, the performing arts. The vacation experience for children ages 7 to 14 is currently in its ninth year. It's a means of helping students understand that there are opportunities in the creative industries if they are not into mainstream careers. It helps them to give them an opportunity to engage another industry outside of the main school stream, academics and stuff, you know. We see culture as forming a role in the child's life. In fact, internationally, if a child enters a university now without a cultural background or doing something other than academics, he is not accepted. At this camp, participants were taught basic music literacy and how to play musical instruments such as the violin, guitar, quattro, steel pan and the recorder. They also learned the fundamentals of African rhythm, drumming and folk singing. The camp had six different stations in 2017, all with experienced tutors. There are two camps. There is the music camp and the pan camp. The music camps are being held at Scarborough Methodist and Roxborough Anglican. The pan camps are being held at Cats and Drummers in Black Rock, Mason Hall Secondary, Bell Garden Eastside, and Buku the NLCB Buccaneers Pantent. The vacation experience ran from July 10th to the 27th. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk to Big. Shrimp and the signature steak are some of the foods you can enjoy when you dine here at Rebs. Friday is the one day of the week guests get the ultimate party experience until 4 a.m. Now the Tobago Heritage Food Fair, Art, Artifacts and Craft Exhibition was one event visitors looked forward to as it provided them with the opportunity to mainly eat authentic Tobago food. Here are the details. From food, culture and art to song, dance and drama, the Tobago Heritage Festival is showcasing and preserving the culture of this island. It runs from mid-July to August 1st. And the Scarborough Esplanade was one of the stops for heritage patrons who attended the annual food fair, art, artifact and craft exhibition. Visitors were invited to sample the traditional foods served and admire the beauty of the art, artifacts and craft pieces. The event basically is to sort of um, sensitize our locals and visitors about the traditional foods that um, our parents, grandparents and even our parents would have um, participated in as part of their daily lives. It's a sort of um, revisiting for the older folks and an introduction for the younger ones who may not have known about some of these traditional foods. One aim of the exhibition is to expose locals and visitors to authentic Tobagonian cuisine. This event has been running for over 30 years. Well, way back in 1986-87, I think, when um, the actual event started, the food part of the event was um, thought of as uh, being very integral to the traditional art form of Tobago. It, of course, would bring back memories for our older folks and even teach some of our younger ones um, the ways in which our grandparents and our parents would have prepared their meals, even from the, these of the stage of planting to consumption. 
The event also allows Tobagonians of different generations to experience these traditions together and other benefits. Of course, the first thing you would come to your mind would be the economic benefit that they would derive. But it would also give us the opportunity of really eating differently, preparing our foods differently. I personally see it as one of, apart from the knowledge gained from things that have transpired way back when, it can also benefit us in terms of even the way we may want to prepare our foods now. The Tobago Heritage Festival is the largest annual cultural event in Tobago. It's managed by the Tobago Festivals Commission with support from the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation. The theme for this year's festivities is Bring Back the Old Time Days, Lenhan. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. So today we're asking, what do you like best about the Tobago Heritage Festival? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. What I like about the Heritage Festival are the plays and the drums. The drum festival show that they have every year. Why I love this show is because it keeps the youths active and also brings a nice energy to the island. I like the way that they're bringing back the old time days to see, um, the, to make the young ones believe that what they did long time was right to do today. Two different types of persons, which is the mature and the young person dancing the cocoa and they're thinking and again on in the cocoa and the squeezing and the sugar cane and you know, everybody just come together, it's just like a one love thing. I like that about Charlotte. I like the costumes and the acts, the fun things they've been putting together to make for the festival. It's really entertaining. The old time weddings and the games we used to play because they are very informative and it reminds us of our generation and the younger generation of the things from long ago. I get to learn more about my culture and I like the Moku Jambi, the way how they performed at Boku, and I like the heritage. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago, and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program, and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Black Rock Seafood Festival.